Welcome to this node breakdown for Mardini 2024 with Grayscale Gorilla. This is day 28, and today's node is the lab simple rope wraps up. So inside of Houdini at the sub level, we can go ahead and drop a labs simple rope wrap right over here. You'll see that it does require two inputs. The first input is going to be a cutting plane, but the second input is the geometry that we want to apply ropes to. So let's just go ahead and use a sphere for now. So go and put a sphere into second input. And then its first input, we need a cutting plane. So a useful thing to use for this is just a grid. So we'll take a grid over here. We're gonna shrink it down to two by two. So if we have our sphere and our grid templated, it's just going to look like that. Plug this into first input. And what it will do is where this is being cut, it'll add a rope. So we can merge the output of this back with our sphere, just like that. That's what we have. You can see that as we make changes to our grid, the actual rope that it's adding will change. And we can have multiple grids. So if we just use a merge over here, we can have more than one rope. And the order of which rope is on top is dependent on the merge order over here. So if we swap it around, you'll see that they swap. As for the settings on our simple rope wrap over here, we have a resolution. Resolution is going to increase the detail in our rope. So as we drop this, you'll see that we have a more divided up rope. We have the option for optimizing a curve. And this is going to remove any inline points. So basically any points that are achieving the same goal. So as you can see over here, without it enabled, we have all of these extra points over here. As soon as we optimize, we maintain the shape, but remove any unnecessary points. The tolerance over here controls how much detail to maintain. The lower the value, the more detail we maintain. As we push this up, it'll start to remove more detail. We also have the option to make this a simulated rope. So this is going to run a quasi-static vellum simulation, which just freezes at a particular frame. If we click on this, you'll see that it does cause a slight change, but the actual settings are down here at the bottom for simulation settings. By default, the rest length scale is 0.9. So 0.9 means that it's actually going to decrease the curve size to only 90% of its full scale, right? So it's going to almost shrink wrap around an object. If we increase this to something higher than one, so say 1.1, then your rope's actually gonna fall off. A lot of the times this might be what you want for a rope that's sort of hanging off of something. So if this rope over here were to just be rotated and then we try it, so wrestling scale to 1.2, there you'll be able to see the kind of simulation that you end up with. And all this is doing is just running 20 frames of a vellum simulation. Okay, as for the other settings over here, we have a style of rope and circle. So rope is this one where it looks as if it's made up of multiple separate cylinders. And this is useful because if we go to degrees twist per unit, you can increase this and end up with twisting in the rope, right? We also have separate options for resolution in terms of rows. And we can increase the diameter or decrease it over here. Before we take a look at custom, I'm just going to go down here and take a look at UV. So UV scale, this is just going to auto generate your UVs for you. You can actually see the UVs that are generated on here. And if you want a particular UV scale, you would just make changes over here. Decreasing it increases the UV tile scaling, just like that. Over here under optimization, we have optimized surfaces. This is just going to poly reduce our surface. So if we drop this, it'll just reduce the number of polygons. Now to go back to this over here where we had a style of custom, let's just go over here and change the style to custom. And what it actually does is it defaults to circle. So you'll see that circle over here and custom are actually the same. And the reason is because if you don't give it a third input, it'll just use a circle as the curve profile. But all that this is doing is it's using a shape for the profile of each of these curves. So I actually did discover an issue with this simple rope wrap third input, but I put it through to my owl, who's in charge of maintaining the side effects labs tools. And he did an amazing job within basically half an hour, he'd had the bug fixed. So if you go ahead and download the latest side effects labs daily build, then this won't be an issue. But if this is an issue for you, then I'll show you how to fix it. And so the issue that I'm talking about is just when using a third input. So if we just use a simple shapes, so lab simple shapes over here. If we were to use this as the input for the third input, we would just change this to an XY plane, something like that. And then we would use this as our profile shape for our curve. You'll see that there is an error. If you're using the most recent daily build of labs, you won't have this error. But if you do, you can go inside, allow editing of contents, dive inside over here. And we have this area over here called sweeping, right? This is the compile block and this is where it's failing. So all we have to do is just add an extra compile block. So create block begin over here and just add it to this optional profile shape over here, right? So that's all we're gonna do. If we jump up a level, it'll now work. If it's reversed for you, like it is over here, all you have to do is just go ahead and use a reverse. And if the normals look messed up, go ahead and just use a normal node over here, right? So that's all we have to do. And then what it will do is it will use this shape as our curve profile. So to make it more clear, 
that's our star shape. So again, you shouldn't need to do that. It is fixed in the latest version of Labs, but in case it's not, that's the fix for that. So I hope that this helped you. A huge thanks to my R for helping me out yesterday. He even made a little hip file and everything to show me how to fix this. So without him, I wouldn't have known how to fix that node. But that's all for this video. Tomorrow's video is going to be day 29, and we're going to be looking at the Labs Lot Subdivision SOP. So thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.